Can you spot the difference between these two swings? Well, if you can't, I got a hint for you. It has something to do with the load, and it's one very common mistake, especially in younger hitters, that you can make a change right now and have a much more powerful swing. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you guys haven't figured it out already, the, the difference between the two swings was the back arm and the positioning of it in the swing. In the first swing, the back arm, the, the, the arm was more in a V shape. We've hit on this in other videos, but I thought it very important because this is very prevalent, like I said, especially in young hitters. And I've actually even had some higher level guys come in when they're struggling, this, this arm kind of collapse into this position. So this would be kind of a V shaped position versus the other swing is in more of a box shaped position where the arm is more in a 90 degree angle. So the mechanics of this guys is if we want a more powerful swing, we need to be in powerful positions. So a more powerful position for the human body is when the arms are at 90 degree angles. So I analogize this to a bench press a lot. So, cause if you're in the gym and you know, you've worked out, you know, anybody worked out, you can, you can say, well, what can you push more weight with? Can you push more weight if your arms are at a 90 degree angle versus if they are collapsed and bent? Well, a lot of, you know, guys doing bench press will allow that bench. So I'll use my bat here. So I'll actually allow that bar to come all the way down to their bench to get a good workout, but they're not as strong from here. They're much more strong when the arms are at a 90 degree angle. So we can push more weight from a 90. Now that doesn't mean that's how we want to work out. But when we're performing, when we're trying to get a job done, and that is, you know, pushing some weight because this bat creates some serious weight when we start swinging it, we need to be in a strong position. So guys, it's very simple. We need to be checking for a very common issue that I see. That's where this right arm is collapsed and go ahead and get it into a strong position into more of a box shape. So there's a lot of things that we can do in terms of drills. You know, you can throw a ball in between your arm, like a basketball or something like that. But the main thing to understand is that if we are in a strong position, we are going to be able to support more weight, which means we can support more speed because speed adds weight. And now we can have a much more powerful swing. So what we're going to do to work on this is simply be more conscientious of it and make an adjustment in our setup. And then that's where most of the case, so a lot with a lot of younger kids, I'll have them come in for the first time and their arm will be collapsed and they'll make swings. Well, one really good thing to do is if you follow the pro speed hitting system at all, and you know the speed load checkpoints, we know we want our hands in front of the vertical toe line. Well, to get our hands in front of the toe line, we have to move our hands further away from our body. When our hands move further away from our body, our elbows start straightening out. Well, we don't want it straight, we want it bent. So all we need to do is get our hands a little bit further away from our body, and now we have that nice box shape for our load. Now, no matter where your elbow height is, we still, no matter what your swing is, we can still have this box shape from anywhere in our, in our load. So, you know, in the pro speed hitting system, we say we want our elbow roughly at a, either a 45 to a 90 degree, somewhere in between those two. Wherever is comfortable is a pretty good, you know, average for where we want to be. But we do want to have this box shape or this not strong 90 degree angle in our arm. So what uh, easiest way to work on this, guys, is to get into your load stride position look at your back arm. And even if it's, you know, borderline here, go ahead and give it a nice little box shape. We don't want to go past that by any means. We want a good solid 90 degree angle. And then from there, just make sure it stays in that 90 degree angle and make some swings. So a lot of kids, you know, when, they, when I have them do this for the first time, it might not be the most comfortable thing in the world for them. But once they get a little bit used to it, it's much stronger. We can swing much faster and it's a much more direct route to the, to the ball. So from the face on view, same thing. I'm going to get in my load stride position. I can pause here. I can look. I can check. I make sure I've got my 90 degree angle, make swings, and we'll be good to go. All right, guys. So make sure you get that arm into a powerful position so you can support your speed, have an instantly more powerful swing, and hitting becomes a lot more easy because we're not, there's nothing going to be interrupting the path and you're going to be able to swing a lot faster. Now, guys, not only do we want our arm in a more powerful position, we need our body in a more powerful position to support speed in the swing. I got a great bonus for you. I'm going to play a preview of one of our best weight shift videos from the membership website that you can get instant access to by clicking on the iCard or the link in the description below. If you can couple the weight shift and the powerful position with the right arm, you're going to have your body supporting a more powerful swing along with your setup. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna now start showing how our weight shift is involved with the release of the bat. We just simply need to understand 
exactly where we want to be in our weight shift. So we're going to get a lot more specific. We're going to be talking about the timing of getting the back pocket in front of the tee at the same time we're hitting the ball. But the first thing we need to do, guys, is we need to rep this out and make sure that we can definitely get the weight transfer that we need. So we're going to put our arms across our chest. We're going to get at least 100 repetitions 